many of you know, how many of you uh, know the, the story of, of this particular this particular uh, storm in the Bible. I probably, probably if I ask anybody if you, uh, if you could tell me what happened, uh, probably everybody, everybody would raise their hand. How many times have we preached out of this thing? How many times have we looked at this thing? You remember the story of Jesus being in the boat and the storm hitting them out at, out at sea. And, uh, and, Boy, we have, we have, I don't know how many times read that, uh, read that account and studied and how many sermons I was looking at one of the Bibles that, that I've got uh, sitting by my chair, which I have preached out of for years. And then now I'm using a, uh, I'm using a, a Bible that, uh, that's what's called an extra large print so that I can actually see the words now. And, uh, but, uh, but, I was looking in my other Bible, my study Bible, and I must have five or six sermons written around this particular one, one particular storm in the Bible. And so uh, I've, I've preached many times, but I'm going back to it again and, uh, and look at it. And what I want to talk about today is being thankful. This is the, the being thanksgiving we want to. Uh, all of us went through the last couple of days of hopefully being thankful, thankful to God for what God has blessed us. We sat down and we ate, or maybe you ate alone, or maybe you ate with some people, or maybe you just sat around with one or two, or perhaps families of 30 or 40, who knows? Doesn't matter how many people were there. It doesn't matter where you were. The key is, uh, were you thankful? Were you thankful for what you had? I remember, I remember years ago, years ago, I learned a valuable lesson about being thankful. Uh, I went to work day after day. I've told the story. Went to work day after day after day. And, uh, and what I loved was bologna sandwiches. I could eat bologna every day. And I did. I'd go to work, I'd open up my work, my little lunch box, and I'd get my bologna sandwich out. And I'd eat that bologna sandwich. And I, I liked it. It was good. And I liked mustard and mayonnaise and pickles on it. And I, I just loved my, my bologna sandwich. But one day it just, I just had, I was at one of those days where I had a bad time at work. And I got home and I said something to Sue. You know, I, I'm just tired of bologna sandwiches. Can't, is there anything else? And I just put my lunchbox down and just was grumpy and I was tired of bologna sandwiches. Well, the next day I went to work and I opened up my lunchbox, got my sandwich out, took a big bite out of it, and I thought, this thing's kind of thin. I opened the bread up, and there was mustard on this side and mayonnaise on this side, and that was it. <laughs> I opened it up, and there wasn't no blown in it. I went home, and I said, did uh, you forget something? She said, what? I said, the blown. She said, well, you said you were tired of it. And I said, well, I wasn't that tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> So the next morning, next day, I went and I, when I opened up my lunchbox, there was the bologna back in it. And you know what? I never complained about bologna sandwich. <laughs> never plucked. Sometimes, sometimes you got to, sometimes you got to go down into the valley before you appreciate the mountaintop. Amen. That's right. And uh, and so you know that 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 bologna sandwich tasted good to me uh, for as long as I ate them. And uh, that's the thing. That wherever you were this week, I hope you were just thankful. Amen. That's what the whole thing's about. Being thankful, uh, thankful to God for what God has blessed us with. And, uh, and, and I want to talk about being thankful today and use this storm as an example. The title of it is Being Thankful for the Right Thing. Being Thankful for the Right Thing. Let's look at in Mark chapter 4, let's look at verse 30. 
he says. It says, and when they had sent away uh, the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. Notice that they, they, they didn't set out sailing out into the Sea of Galilee by themselves. There were a lot of, lot of ships that sailed with them that day. Verse 37, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full, full of water, what he's talking about. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Verse 40 says, And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. Wow, what manner of man is this? I, I, I want to. I want to talk about, I want to talk about being thankful for the right thing. Sometimes you've got to go through a storm to, to be truly thankful for what you have. Sometimes you have to you have to bite into that sandwich and find nothing to appreciate the next sandwich that has something. Amen. Sometimes you just have to go through some things to, to realize that, boy, I'm sure glad. I'm glad that those days are over. I reckon all of us have been through some storms in our life. If you've never had a difficulty, if you've never had a hardship, if you've never been through a storm, then you haven't lived. You must have been hiding somewhere. You must have been packed up somewhere. You, you, you didn't come out of the room at all. Because I can tell you, if you live life in this world today, you're going to go through a storm somewhere. Somewhere the people are going to disappoint you. Somewhere people are going to bring you down. I was telling the Sunday school class this morning, there's, there's four kind of storms in the Bible. There, there's storms that God sends to you for a reason. And God sends storms into our life to try to get our attention. Amen. Sometimes God has to grab us by the neck and shake us and say, take a look at what you're going through. Maybe, maybe you need to look at your life. That's right. Maybe you need to look at, at the things that, that you're doing and maybe that storm just might be things that you're causing. And, and, and you know, storms sometimes come from God. And then also we talked about this morning, and I'll just share it with the church, that storms come from the devil. That's right. The devil will bring storms into your life. Uh, the devil has a desire to destroy you. He has a desire to destroy your walk with God. He has a desire to destroy your faith. He wants to try to kill you and, and your family and everybody else around you. He, he, he hates us all if we take a stand for God. And so the, the devil's going to try to destroy us. They come from God because God wants us to walk the, the right path. And we get off of it, and sometimes God has to put us in a storm to bring us back to the right place. They come from the devil because the devil wants to knock us off the right path and send us down the wrong path. Right. And then storms sometimes come from other people. You didn't cause it. God didn't cause it. The devil didn't cause it. But you just got in the mess because of somebody in your life. They just brought you into a storm. They just caused it into your life. Maybe you were trying to help them. Maybe you were trying to do something good, but all of a sudden you found yourself in a storm. Uh, other people can cause storms in your life. And then, of course, we don't need God to cause storms. We don't need the devil to cause storms. We don't need uh, other people to cause storms. Sometimes we can do a good job on bringing storms into our life, you know, all by ourselves. Amen, that's right. We can just get ourselves in a mess and we don't need nobody else to do it. 
And so you know what? When there there's storms everywhere. And all and and here we've got apostles in this boat. And notice it said, and other ships with them. So they weren't the only boat out there on that water. And they were all traveling across that sea when that storm hit. Do you think that God knew that storm was going to hit them? Sure he did. But yet God was riding in the boat. And so there's, a, there's got to be a reason why God is riding in the boat and yet the storm of the century hits them out there on the water. Maybe there's a lesson in all of this that God's trying to teach us. And that's one of the things I always ask God. Why would you tell us this little story right here? Here it is that God took up a little column in our Bible to tell us about the Lord floating across on a boat going across the Sea of Galilee and a storm hit him. Now why would God take up a little space in the Bible to tell us that? Of all the things that he could have told us about the Lord Jesus Christ, of all the things that he could have told us about how to live our life, he took time to tell us about a little storm that the Lord was in a boat that he went through. So there's got to be something in that for God to take up the space in our Bible. There's got to be something that God wants us to get out of this thing. Amen. You know, they, they, they're sitting there in this boat and they go through this horrible storm and they say, what manner of man is this? And you know, I don't think that was a question at all really in their minds. They knew who this man was. I really think it was, it was more of a statement. What manner of man is this? Looking at him and seeing that here's this man, even though God ends it with a question mark. Maybe that was just the way the translators did it. But I really think they knew who he was. They had traveled with him before and they knew the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe they recognized him. I believe they truly knew who he was. And yet they look at him and say, what manner of man is this? What manner of man is in your boat? Here we are going through life on this earth. And, and, and you know, all of us need to look around and find out who's riding in our boat. If the Lord is in your boat, then, then, you're going you're gonna to survive that storm. But if the Lord's not in your boat, if the Lord's not with you, then you're riding by yourself. And so many people out there in this world today are going through life, riding through storm after storm after storm, and they don't have the one that they need in the boat with them. That's right. Amen. They, they're going through storm after storm. How many storms did I go through in my life that I didn't have God riding in my boat? Any one of those storms could have sunk me. Any one of those storms could have taken my boat down. And if they had, I'd be burning in hell today. How many storms are people going through out there that they don't have the Son of God riding in their boat with them? I'm thankful that that today as I go through storm after storm, and as you go through storm after storm, we know who's riding in our boat today. But I tell you, that so many times, people, people are, are just, they don't stop and realize and not thankful for who's riding in their boat. You know, one of the things that Thanksgiving should be, Thanksgiving should be a time that we stop and reflect on how thankful we really are knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what Thanksgiving should be. That's what Thanksgiving should be all about. It should be. It, 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 I remember when, I remember it, I taught history years ago. Uh, I started out teaching history at Brunswick High School. And as I taught, one of the textbooks in there, it was filled with, with all of the Thanksgiving of being thankful for what the Indians did for the for the for the settlers. How the Indians saved their life. How the Indians came and provided food for them. I got news for you. Those Indians would have killed those settlers if they'd have had half a chance. 
those Indians, even though some of the Indians taught them how to do things later, those settlers survived by the power of God, Amen. not by the power of Indians, yeah. not by the power. I, I sat there and, and I studied uh, all of those things that I thought, where are you coming from that, that there is no God anymore in being thankful? When I went to school, and I'm talking about back in the 50s and the 60s, it was filled with thanksgiving to God. Amen. But yet that's gone today, and we're thankful for everybody else that came to the rescue. But God's not mentioned at all. Amen. We need to be thankful. This Thanksgiving should be a time that we remember who truly ha has provided life for us. Yes, Our life is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our life is through what the Lord did. It's God that gets us through storms. It's God that got the early settlers through storms. It's God that provided for them as they settled this country. It's God that blessed America. It's God that gave the fruited plains and the, and the plains from sea to shining sea and on and on and on. Do you think that, that we had the ability to feed the world? We were just people. But it was God that blessed this nation because it was God that saw that people came here to worship Him. Yeah. And when people worship God and place God first, God blesses them. Yeah. And this nation was blessed because people loved God. And people came here to serve God. And people came here to worship God. And God poured out His blessings upon this nation. Do you think that the that the nations in Europe have different uh, dirt? Why is it that they can't grow food to feed the world? Why is it that Russia can't feed the world? They got the same dirt that we got. Why is it that China can't feed the world? They got more dirt than we got. But why is it that the crops don't grow there and they grow here? Because God blessed America. Amen. Because people came to America to serve God. Amen. And this was a nation that has been blessed by God. And this is a nation that, that ha can do more stuff. But if we lose God, then, then, then watch the dirt be just like Russia's dirt. Amen. If, we, if we run God out, watch the dirt become China's dirt. That's right. it, it, we, haven't, we haven't developed something that, that can grow bigger and better than God. Amen. You know, Thanksgiving, we should, we should remember what Thanksgiving is all about. Thanksgiving's about God. Right. It's about being thankful to God. Let me, let me share three little things here real quick. And you know what real quick means. It, but let me share, let me share with you uh, three things. That, that I'm thankful for the, this morning. The first thing that I want us to look at comes out of verse 39. We just read this account of this storm. Look in verse 39 where I just read. In Mark chapter 4, verse 39, it says, And he arose, talking about Jesus, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. I want you to see something that I am so thankful for, and that is that we have a Lord that can still the storms. Amen. We have a Lord that can still the storms. It says that he looked right here at the storms, and it says he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the wind. He turned to that storm and said, enough is enough. Stop. And, and it says, and the winds ceased. He said, peace, be still. And he stilled the storms. We've got a Savior that can still any storm in your life. We've got a Savior that can stop whatever comes. Don't think that that that. That everything is good and rosy in your life. As soon as you settle down and say, I ain't got no problems, watch out. Because I can tell you, 
if you think that there, I've done mastered it, I'm fine, I got everything I need, I don't have to worry about nothing, it can come crashing down before you know it. But the good news is we got a Savior that can turn to that storm and say, peace, be still. Amen. Stop. Enough is enough. And he, he might, God may let, let us go through some of it, but God also can come right there when he looks at us and we say, oh dear God, please come and help me, help my family, help this person. God can step in and say enough is enough. Right. That, that storm may not be from God. That storm may be from the devil. And all we got to do is go to God and say, oh dear God, I need you right now. Stop that storm. And he can step right in and stop it and push it aside and say, that's it. That's it. He's endured enough. She's gone through enough. And he can stop it. He can just say, peace, be still. We've got a Savior that can stop whatever you're going through. Amen. It doesn't matter. Now, if it's God's will that we go through it, God will make a way for us to get through it. That's the one thing that I've often found. Sometimes I've prayed and asked God to, to stop whatever was going on, and God's God knew better, and God let it let it happen. Let us go through it, and then and then, but was right there walking along, taking step by step as we went through it, and we came out on the other end, and we looked back at that storm and said, "Oh, well, that was a horrible time. That was a terrible time." But we learned God can get through. It. God can take us through it, and listen. That's the thing we've got. We've got a Savior that's bigger than the storm. We've got a Savior that's stronger than any storm that can come your way. Whatever you're facing, whatever you go through, it doesn't matter because we've got a Lord that can step in and say, peace be still. He can stop the storms. Listen, let me, let me share something else with you. Uh, and, and that's also found in verse 39. In verse 39, I want you to notice where it says, And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. When I read that, I, I wrote down out there that I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I've got a Savior of souls. I've got a Savior of souls. You know what? It, when God told me that, that, that the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Remember what, we, what the Bible, we just read a few minutes ago. It says, they set sail and it said, and other ships with them. You realize that, that there was a lot of people out there heading across the Sea of Galilee when that storm hit. It wasn't just the boat with Jesus in it. There was another boat on the other side and another boat on the other side. And there were boats all the way out. It said other little ships were sailing with them. Every one of those ships had people in them. That's right. Those people were going through the same storm that this little ship was going through. Those people were about to drown just like this ship was. How many people were out there in those boats? We don't know. God doesn't tell us. But the one thing I do know, it was a lot of people that were out there. But you know what? It wasn't that the Lord Jesus Christ in that boat saved those people in his boat. But he saved everybody else that was out there on that Sea of Galilee that day. He's a savior of souls. He not only saved my soul, he saved your soul. And every individual that has ever come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he was there. And any... any when you went through that time in your life, when you came to that point in which you wanted to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, there was some turmoil in your life. There was something that was pulling you. There was something that was, a, that was speaking to you. Whatever it meant. You may have been in a Sunday school class and a Sunday school teacher was teaching and the Holy Spirit was saying, come to me, come to me. You need me right now. Maybe you were sitting in a church and a preacher was preaching and the Holy Spirit was grabbing a hold of your heart and saying, listen to me, come to me. You need me right now. 
Maybe you were somewhere sitting on a couch and somebody was speaking to you and it was the Holy Spirit that was grabbing your heart and saying, listen to me, listen to what he's saying, what she's saying. Whatever it is, you were in the storm at that moment. Amen. And you could have said, no. And a lot of people have. No, I don't think so. It's just like I've said the story many times. I sat in a man's house for over an hour sharing the gospel with him. He sat there on the couch and listened to me and listened to me. And we read scripture after scripture and tears came down that old man's face. And he was listening to everything I said. And I thought, the Lord is dealing with him. The Holy Spirit is dealing with his heart. And I turned to him and I said, and I called his name and I said, wouldn't you like right now to pray and ask Christ to be your Savior? And he thought for a second and he looked up and he said, no, I don't think I can do it. And I just, I just was dumbfounded. And I said, why? Well, I don't think I can live it. And that was his answer. I don't think I can live it. And after spending another half hour with him, talking with him, and explaining to him how it's God that lives through you, not you. Amen. And how it, nobody can live it without God living in us. Wouldn't you want to accept him and bring him? No. Over and over. No. No. And after a while, I just left defeated because he would not, would not accept the Lord Jesus Christ. So many people, so many people are in the storm out there, in the storm out there. And Christ is there trying to say this soul and this soul and this soul. He's a savior of souls, but he can't make you. Amen. He won't force you. That's right. He won't, he won't. Get there and say, you've got to accept me. You will accept me. But he's calling you. He's calling every one of us when we were lost. That's right. He called us one by one, groups, however it was. He called our heart. He spoke to us. He wanted us. And some accepted, some didn't. I didn't accept it at first. I sat in a church and listened to it and then walked out. Totally convinced I was okay. He must have been talking about somebody else. Wasn't talking about me. I got I got baptized when I was a baby in 1949. I'm going to heaven. I knew I was going to heaven because I got baptized as a baby. And 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 you know what? My mom and my mama said I was going to go to heaven because I got sprinkled as a baby. My daddy said I was going to go to heaven because I got sprinkled by uh, as a baby. Uh, my BAB certificate in March of 1949 says John Lawrence Lane will enter the, the kingdom of heaven on this baptismal day. I was totally convinced. Didn't matter. I was going to heaven. But you know what? One day the Holy Spirit got a hold of my heart and said, you ain't going to heaven. That's right. You ain't going to heaven. Here's the scriptures right here and you haven't done that. You haven't you haven't accepted. You haven't believed it. You didn't believe it back then when you were a baby, and you don't believe it today. And one of those days is when I gave my life. He's a savior of souls. Amen. He'll save you if you come to him, That's right. if you'll give your life to him. Listen, hey, uh, something else I want you to see in verse 40 and 41. In verse 40 and 41, it said, And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Well, I was there one time. And they feared exceedingly and said one to the other, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want you to see right there in verse 40 where it said, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I, I want you to understand that, that we need to be thankful that we've got the Lord Jesus Christ as the shepherd of our sheep. He's the shepherd of our sheep. You know what? That's the, the good thing. He is with us. He is leading us. 
He is taking care of us. He is the one. He's our shepherd. And we need to learn to follow him. You see, the shepherd is going to lead the sheep. The shepherd doesn't follow the sheep. The shepherd leads the sheep. The shepherd takes them to the green pastures. The shepherd takes them to the still waters. The shepherd didn't, doesn't just turn them loose and let them wander. He makes sure that they go to where he wants them to go. The sheep will follow the shepherd and he'll carry them to the right place. And you know what? Our biggest problem is that we don't follow the shepherd sometimes. One of our biggest problems is that Jesus will lead us down the right path, but we find another path that we want to go down. And if we wander off, we can find ourselves to where the Lord looks around and he says, there's 99. Where's the one? Where's the one? Oh, that was Larry. Larry wandered down that path. And you see, so many times, so many times people have wandered off the path of where Jesus wants to lead us. Right. Stray sheep can go off the edge. Stray sheep can wander out into the deep waters. Stray sheep can go into some, some ditches that can, that can hurt them. We need to be careful that we follow our shepherd. That's what God wants us. He wants us to understand that we have nothing to fear. Why are you so fearful, he said. We have nothing to fear if we're following the shepherd. We have nothing to fear if we're doing what God wants us to do. Right. How is it that you have no faith? Why is it, why, he said, why aren't, why do you have no faith? Well, because I want to, I want to travel down my own path. Jesus said, no, you need to be following me. You need to be following and doing what I want you to do. Right. You see, what the Lord is trying to get us to see is that we've got a lot to be thankful for. It's just that we need to be thankful for the right things. Amen. We need to be thankful for a Lord that, that will stop our storms. We need to be thankful for a Lord that will save our soul. We need to be thankful for a Lord that is our shepherd and will lead us in the right paths. Amen. We, we've got the Lord. We need to be thankful for it. Right. Who's in your boat today? Who are you following? Who's, who's taking care of you? That's the thing that, that so many people want to do it themselves. And, uh, and we, all, we all are guilty of trying to make our own decisions instead of asking God to, to take us down the path that we need to go. So let's, let's have a word of prayer as we get ready to head out today. And I, I thank everybody for coming today.